When pitching a film, specifically without a script, in my experience, it's good to have a few things for your actual pitch, which is the treatment. That treatment is often just black text on a white page, just like a script. Then I'll often include a director's pitch, which is another visual doc that will explain how I intend to approach the film as a director, talking about the theme, characters, experience it will give the audience, and if applicable, the practical elements of how it will be accomplished. You'll also need a log line, which seems pointless when the entire story is right there in the treatment, but it does give the executives a quick look at what the film might be. So unfortunately, it's often an important piece of the puzzle. All of that can shift slightly depending on what you're pitching and who you're pitching to. For me, I've only been pitching features to larger production companies and studios. So all of this is based on my personal experience in that world. If you're pitching to private investors or something like a series, it would adjust. But the one thing that does stay consistent is the rip reel. And if you don't know what a rip reel is, a rip reel, which is also called a rip matic it's basically a trailer for a film that hasn't been made yet, your film. Normally, rip reels are made using other films. You grab clips from films that have a similar vibe to yours and you can cut them together again to give a sense of what your film would be. And that is why it's called a rip reel. You are ripping shots from other things to give a sense of a new thing. I wish I could show some of mine here, but they're all still in pitch phase, so I can't. There are a few floating around online like Joe Carnahan's rip reel for his Daredevil film that never happened or Ryan Johnson's rip for Looper. Ryan Johnson's rip reel uses some simple art for moments that were very specific to his film as well. Link to both of those in the notes below. But if you go and watch these, you'll see how they do exactly that. They rip shots from other films to build out their pitch of this new thing. And that is kind of what I struggle with, the idea of trying to give a sense of a new thing by using recognizable old things. If you're using existing films, that's what people are going to be seeing, that recognizable actor or moment and so on. I've tried to get around that at least a little bit by shooting original elements for real where I could. We actually showed a bit of that in an older episode. I've also comped different shots together from different films to get exactly what I was looking for and change the look. But the easiest way and the one I do as often as I can is to use stock footage. With that, I can find the feel I'm looking for, but also it's unrecognizable. I actually have one rip reel specifically that's made up entirely of stock footage and it's one of my favorites that I've done. So today, that's what we're gonna do. Build out a rip reel using nothing but stock footage music and sound effects. And I'm gonna be using Artless Max, who is also our partner for this episode. And it's what gave me the idea to finally tackle this subject that I've been wanting to do for a while. And if you don't know, Artlist, Artgrid, Motion Array, and HipFilm are all the same company. And now they brought all of those resources under one subscription with Artlist Max. So now under the Artlist Max subscription, you have music, sound effects, footage, templates, plugins, and apps, which is the HipFilm app, their editing and compositing software, and Emerge, their photo editing software. So you have everything right here on one site, which I'm excited about since it's annoying to jump around to multiple places for one project. But now they smartly combined it all so that you have everything you need in one spot for whatever you're working on and with their usual license to use however you need it. So we have where we are going to be pulling our music sound effects and footage from, but we need the guiding idea. Obviously, if you're making a rip reel, it's for your project. You already have that. Personally, I do not tackle a rip reel until until I have a completed treatment. And along the way of building that treatment, I'm gathering a lot of visuals too. So I have a very specific idea in my mind about what this should look and feel like. But what we're doing today is a bit of an odd approach because we are going to make a rip reel that isn't really based on anything. So let's just say this is a horror film. And the concept has to do with the idea of vision, how we actually see things. And something within our film happens that opens the supernatural world to our character. So let's have that be our guiding light. Now, for me, I always try to do three things with a rip reel. Give a sense of tone, hint at a concept, and get the viewer excited to see the thing, just like a trailer for an actual film. To start this off with a normal trailer, I would start with music, but with rip reels, I like to figure out what my driving audio is, and that's usually some kind of voiceover. For the ballistic feature I'm pitching, I hired a voiceover artist. You can get that easily through something like Fiverr. For another, I use dialogue from other films, and of course, if we've shown before, you can use this website to strip music out and be left with just the voice. And then another time, I needed a creepy sort of women's voice, and I didn't want to call in any more favors, so I just used my own voice, used effects to make it sound how I needed it to, and 
and it worked great. But that was a few years ago, and now you have the option of AI. The Black Friday ad we showed recently was actually an AI voiceover. New assets, 70% off, first hour only. And another thing that I've done is to hunt down public domain audio, which is what we're gonna do today for obvious reasons. For this, I'm gonna go to archive.org. You can find all kinds of things here, but the great thing about this is all the public domain assets you can find. So I'll search I here, and I came across this. If you look down here in the info, you can see that it is public domain, so we're good to go. Now again, if this was an actual rip reel, you don't need to worry about copyright since rip reels aren't normally for the public. But in this instance, it's a must. So I'm gonna comb through this piece and find a few little blurbs that I want to use. And now I can jump over to Artlist's music section and start hunting for the right track. For something like this, I like to play the voiceover that I'm using on loop while I sample different music tracks. This is really helpful in discovering what will and won't work for your tone. Nature has located the eye close to the brain so that its messages may arrive there quickly. But inside Artlist, you can use their search function to get really specific. But I'm just going to search for horror and scan through all of these, and I ended up with a handful that felt like they could work. Now, I don't always do it this way, but most often my next step is to get a rough of the rip reel without any visuals, just the music and the voiceover. This lets me get a framework for what I'm going to be doing here. And for me, I think of these in the same way as anything else in Act 1, 2, and 3, or a beginning, middle, and end. It's a basic idea, but incredibly important for having a piece that feels complete. And this goes for anything, a film, a joke, telling a story. For instance, yesterday, Josh showed up. He was angry at me for eating the last bagel bite, punched me in the face. So I gave him the bagel bite and we made up. Josh coming up to me is the beginning. He's mad and punching me in the face is the middle. Me giving him the bagel bite and us making up is the ending. And yes, that's an incredibly stupid example, but the simplicity of that really can be your North Star. So I'll cut this together with that in mind, an intro and a build with our public domain footage, then our middle section is going to be our action and our final ending moment that will move us into our title. And I'm using a few music tracks to accomplish this, and I'm gonna hard cut to an end hit for the title. So I'll go grab some hits and risers from the sound effects section on Artlist as well, and work those in to lead into our final moment, and this is what that sounds like. Right now, at this very moment, as you watch these light rays striking the magnified eye, similar tiny beams of light are entering your own eyes. And it's by our eyes that we are able to gain a great part of our knowledge. Nature has located the eye close to the brain so that its messages may arrive there quickly. The innermost layer of the eyeball is the retina, which convert light waves into nerve impulses in some manner which even science of today cannot fully explain. Even science of today cannot fully explain. So now with this framework in place, I'll start collecting my footage. With the first being some VHS type shots that can act as our lead into our footage. Then I'll grab some old school looking TV shots that I can put our public domain footage in since I decided it would be cool to leave that in the actual piece. Then it's time to find footage for our fake film. And although this isn't exactly to an idea I have, I do have a concept that I've been working on that this does fit into. So I have my full story and character in my mind while I'm looking for different shots. So I'll look for things like eye or fire, blood, old house. And again, while I'm searching, I have a very specific visual idea in my head. So I'm looking for things that fit that tone. Over here, we have options we can shift to to help us there. Like if I search old house, I can add smooth movement over here and under people, select none, so I can just get a house or its interiors. I'm also clicking into a shot that may feel like the right direction, but it's not perfect for what I'm thinking since I can scroll down here and go into more shots from that collection. And I found a lot of the shots that I used in here that way. In my actual idea, there's old 40s and 50s home movies. So I did a search for that and was honestly shocked to actually find some great shots for that as well. But now that I have my footage, I'm bringing that in and roughing those shots in. I'm not getting overly precious at this point, I'm doing it more by what I feel than anything logical. I know I want to start with a house, but after that, I'm just grabbing clicks from my bin here and placing them in again, just following my gut more than anything else. But now I have something to work from. It's not great, but I'll start refining.
refining here, adding faster cuts toward the end or jumping back to Artlist to grab more shots as I get ideas or realize I need something specific. And finally, I had something decent. But as I was playing it, something was feeling off, disconnected. It took a minute, but I realized it was the fire shots. In the idea I have in my head, there is no car fire and there's no real reason for TV to be on fire. So I jumped back into the footage section on Artlist and found this hallway fire. I tossed that in and it completely fixed my issue. So now I'm happy with where it's at, so it's time to start sweetening. First, I know I want to add flashes of this creepy moment from the public domain footage, so I'll take a few frames of that and insert it in a handful of places, including our very last moment before we go to the title. Then it was time for a few sound effects. I'm only looking for a handful of things here, like a gasp, a scream. We have some great search functions over here to help drill things down, so I'll search scream and select human, find a few that work and move on to the next. I also grabbed some VHS sounds, a film reel sound, fire, and a creepy high-pitched scream that I could layer in at the end. Now I'll fit all of these in here where they should go. And for me, this is a balancing act of where I wanted to stay abstract and where I wanted to add some sound. But after I'm done with that, I wanna add my title. And again, I'm jumping back to Artlist, going into templates. I'm gonna look for just Premiere Pro templates here and I'll use the search term film. This one here works for me, so I'll drop it in, change our text and duration, and I'll also grab this film reel shot to put behind it, so I'll drop those in at the end and I have my edit. So the last step for me is the grade. It's incredibly important to match these shots together with one creative, cohesive idea across the entire piece. If everything feels like an entirely different shot from an entirely different project, it's gonna be even more distracting than using recognizable films. But with that done, we now have our rip reel. Right now, at this very moment, as you watch these light rays striking the magnified eye, similar tiny beams of light are entering your own eyes. And it's by our eyes that we are able to gain a great part of our knowledge. Nature has located the eye close to the brain so that its messages may arrive there quickly. The innermost layer of the eyeball is the retina, which convert light waves into nerve impulses in some manner which even science of today cannot fully explain. of today cannot fully explain. Again, for me, a rip reel is the bait on the hook. I'm not using it to convey the actual story. I'm using it to convey the tone and get a potential buyer excited about what this could be. And honestly, this is an excellent way to get your creative juices flowing for your story before you even write the script. Or just as practice, to toy around with loose ideas and get yourself excited about something to write. Having something tangible does go a long way. And again, this rip is pretty short. If I were to use this for an actual pitch, I'd probably make it a touch longer and maybe add some more voiceover from a film to help convey the idea of the concept just a little bit more. But I wanted to show you all how easy a rip reel can be since when I first started pitching, it was somewhat mysterious and I couldn't find great examples online. So hopefully this helps you when you get to that stage. But that's it for today. Links to everything in the notes below, including our link to Artlist Max. If you use our link, you're going to get two extra months on an annual subscription and it helps us. So win-win. But until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat.